In a previous video, we showed you how to perform a passive survey using NetAlly's AirMapper site survey app. In this video, we'll show you how to use AirMapper to perform an active survey. Performing a passive survey is a great way to gain visibility into your Wi-Fi network coverage and how other networks in the area affect yours. Not only that, the information collected while performing a passive survey is often used during the network planning phase to identify issues that could affect Wi-Fi performance after the infrastructure has been installed. Still, there are things a passive survey will not tell us about the Wi-Fi network. To gain visibility into the actual Wi-Fi network performance, we will want to perform an active survey. In this video, we'll cover the following topics. Reasons for performing an active survey. How to perform an active survey using AirMapper on the AirCheck G2 and on the Etherscope NXG. Also, how to upload the completed survey to Link Live. Let us start with the reasons to perform an active survey. Validate network performance from a client's perspective. Locate dead spots in the facility. View connected access point information. And validate roaming between access points. Let's take a look at each of these in detail. Unlike a passive survey, when performing an active survey, the analyzer is connected to a specific wireless network. This allows us to measure the performance from the client's perspective at each data point. For each of the data points, the following information is collected. Signal strength, noise level, signal to noise ratio, transmit rate, and connected access point. By connecting to the Wi-Fi network, Instead of just passively listening, we can measure the data rate that may be achieved by a client at specific locations in the facility. This performance information allows the person analyzing the results to quickly identify those areas where performance is below the expected threshold. By connecting to a specific Wi-Fi network, dead spots and coverage can quickly be located. If the analyzer is unable to receive a strong enough signal, with the nearest access point to maintain a connection, that data point will be shown as a dark circle on the heat map. This is a quick visual indication of a lack of coverage at that location or roaming problems. For each data point, the AirMapper application records the access point to which it's connected. This information is useful in determining how the connected access point is performing as you move around the site. From a design perspective, this performance information may be used to adjust power levels for specific access points. Smooth and successful roaming is a key feature of any Wi-Fi network. When performing an active survey, roaming events are displayed in Link Live as dashed lines between data points. This provides a clear visual indicator of where roaming occurred and between which access points. Within the AirMapper configuration, it is possible to configure the roaming threshold. This allows the application to simulate client roaming behavior by adjusting this threshold. Now that we've discussed the reasons for performing an active Wi-Fi survey, let's take a look at how we set up and run the active survey on both the AirCheck G2 and Etherscope NXG. As with the passive survey, the first thing to check is the 802.11 settings. This is done by tapping on the settings icon in the lower right corner of the home screen. Next, we will go to the 802.11 settings and look for the Roam Threshold option at the bottom of the screen, which by default is set to negative 75 decibel meters. This value may be changed to reflect the roaming behavior of client devices in your environment. When the signal from the associated access point drops below the set threshold, the AirCheck G2 will attempt to roam to an access point with a stronger signal. After making changes, just tap the Apply button and then the Home button at the top of the screen. Next, I'll go into AirMapper. A message box appears asking me to select a floor plan. In this case, we're going to be loading our floor plan from a USB thumb drive. The local method is to copy the JPEG or PNG file to the root of a USB thumb drive. Then plug the thumb drive into one of the USB ports on the AirCheck G2. I'll tap OK on the message box. Next, I'll tap on Floor Plan, then Add Floor Plan. 
If there is only one floor plan on the USB drive, it will automatically populate the file name. If there is more than one. You can use the drop down arrow to select the desired floor plan. Once the floor plan has been selected, we need to calibrate the floor plan. This is accomplished by tapping on dimensions. The floor plan will be displayed with two red dots connected by a line. Drag these two dots to a known location on the floor plan. It's important that the exact distance between these two locations is known. After locating the calibration points, tap on the marker distance field at the top of the screen. Enter the known distance. Tap Done. Next, tap the back arrow. The floor plan has been calibrated based on the distance entered. Tap Apply to apply the calibration and name. Tap in the circle next to the floor plan to select it. Now we will set the signal propagation distance. This distance will depend on the type of facility where the survey is being conducted. For an office with cubicles, 20 feet is a good number. A larger value could be used in locations with few RF obstacles. Now I will select survey type. For this video, we're doing an active survey. While you're here, it's a good idea to provide a name and description for the survey. Now that the configuration is complete, I will tap apply. I'm ready to begin the survey. I walk to the location where I will begin the survey and tap start. Since I'm performing an active survey, I will need to select a network. Once I select a network, the network configuration screen will appear. It is here where I enter the credentials needed to connect to the network. Once I've provided the required information, I'll tap Apply. The AirCheck G2 will connect to the selected network. The progress is displayed on the screen. Once the connection is complete, I will tap on the Marker button at the bottom left. I will position the floor plan to my current location and tap on the screen. A green circle will appear. This represents the signal propagation distance. I will walk to the edge of the circle and tap the screen. I will repeat this until I have surveyed the desired area. Once the survey is complete, I will tap Stop at the bottom of the screen. Then I will tap the Save icon. I can either upload the survey to Link Live or save it locally. In this case, I'll save it to Link Live. The upload will be queued up on the AirCheck G2 until an internet connection is available, either through the Ethernet port on the side or via the Wi Fi connection test. The Etherscope NXG has two Wi-Fi radios, both a 1x1-802.11ac radio and a 4x4-802.11ac radio. This is a great advantage since it allows you to perform two different surveys in parallel. For example, you can do two active surveys or you can do both an active and passive survey on the same walkthrough. In the case you want to perform two active surveys, you can use the auto test to connect the 4x4 radio to the network. Then use the options provided by the Android operating system to connect the 1x1 radio to the same or another Wi-Fi network. This is a great way to collect performance data on two networks at the same time, or compare how the network performance varies between clients using 1x1 or 4x4 radios. Using the 4x4 radio for the active survey allows the roaming threshold to be configured. This is achieved by going into the auto test profile for the wireless network to be surveyed, tapping on Wi-Fi connection, then tapping on the advanced option. While on the advanced settings screen, you will be able to adjust the roaming threshold. After changing the threshold, tap OK, then tap the back arrow until you get back to the auto test screen. It's important to note that the 1x1 radio does not support changing the roaming threshold. You must use the 4x4 radio to simulate the roaming behavior of other client devices. In the case you want to perform both an active and passive survey, you need to connect the 1x1 radio to the network to be actively surveyed. This is known as a dual survey. And during this survey, both active and passive data is collected. The 1x1 radio collects the active survey data and the 4x4 radio collects the passive survey data. The main advantage of a dual survey is that should performance problems be discovered when analyzing the active survey data, the passive survey data can be used to identify the root cause of the performance problems. One thing to keep in mind while performing a dual survey is that the 4x4 radio should be left in passive scanning mode. The easiest way to determine if the 4x4 radio 
is in passive scanning mode is to look in the upper left corner of the screen. Well, in passive scanning mode, we will see the channel numbers changing. If the 4x4 radio is not in passive scanning mode, simply tap on the Wi-Fi application from the home screen. This will disconnect the 4x4 radio from the access point and restart passive scanning through the channels. Once you are ready to start the survey, data is collected using the same method as a passive survey. Load the floor plan, either JPEG or PNG. Calibrate the floor plan. Set the signal propagation distance. Move to the starting location. Tap Start. As you walk around the facility, tap the screen at your current location. Ensure the circles overlap. Tap Stop when you've completed the survey. To upload the survey data to Link Live, tap the Upload icon in the upper right corner of the screen. You will be given two options, Upload to Link Live and Export to Survey Pro. Upload to Link Live will use an active internet connection to upload the survey data to your Link Live account. Meanwhile, Export to Survey Pro will save the survey data locally using a .amp extension. This file may be transferred to a computer running Air Magnet Survey Pro for offline analysis and reporting. In this case, I'll upload my survey data to Link Live. In summary, different from a passive survey, which the main purpose is to provide visibility into all the Wi-Fi networks in the area and show how they affect yours, the active survey focuses on showing actual network performance from the perspective of end-user client devices. The Etherscope NXG allows you to perform two active surveys in parallel or perform an active and passive survey at the same time, providing a faster way to gain full visibility. Once connected to the network to be surveyed, the survey process is conducted exactly like a passive survey making it simple for anyone to perform both active and passive site surveys. When done, the survey data may be uploaded to Link Live for analysis or exported to Air Magnet Survey Pro, providing both online and offline analysis solutions. Link Live may be used to analyze the survey data from anywhere in the world and without operating system restrictions. This makes it easier to collaborate with team members at remote sites. Thank you for watching this video. For more information on the AirMapper Site Survey app from NetAlly, please visit www.netally.com and be sure to check out our other tutorial videos to find out how to get the most out of your NetAlly tools.